Hello, everybody. This is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor, welcoming you to this BCI podcast number 117. This one is titled, When a Covered Call Strike Moves $1,000 in the Money. We're going to use a real life example with Amazon.com Inc., which trades on the NASDAQ exchange under the ticker symbol AMZN. And yes, folks, this actually did happen. And this is a trade that was shared to me by a member of the BCI community. Now, over the years, I have always stressed how important it is to analyze our trades, to see how we could do better. And always looking back on the trades will allow us all to become better investors. I do this right up to this day now, even though I've been selling options for about 25 years. So let's, uh, let's have a look now at this trade, which was uh, shared with me by a member of our community. On April 16th, 2020, Amazon was purchased at $2,093 per share. So for one contract, that was an investment of $209,300. Wow. That was an expensive uh, trade to make. Now, right after those shares were purchased, a uh, contract was sold for the 2100 uh, strike price. And it was a leaps option nine months out, which expired on January 15th, 2021. The premium was $89 per share or $8,900 per contract. So on the surface, the premium looked pretty juicy to get $8,900 right off the bat. But was it really? And we're going to break this down and make that determination, keeping in mind that this is not a one month like we normally do, but rather a nine month expiration. Now, on August 28th, certainly well before the contract expiration of uh, January 15th, the following year. But on August 28, 2020, Amazon had skyrocketed up to 34.02 per share. Now, one of the reasons was that by taking a contract obligation nine months out, it exposed us to two earnings reports. And those earnings reports were quite favorable and it caused share price to accelerate dramatically. So on August 28th, the cost to close that 2100 strike was $1,356.80 per share or $135,680 per contract, yikes. So in order to close that, if we wanted to roll the option, we'd have to make an additional investment of over $135,000. Now, if we calculated using the unwind now tab of the elite or elite plus calculators, we would see that the actual time value cost to close was 2.6%. The intrinsic value was humongous because the strike was so deep, deep, deep in the money. But the actual time value cost to close was only 2.6%. So that's where the trade lingered on August 28, 2020, still a good four months plus prior to contract expiration. Now, if we were to look at a chart of Amazon, and those of you who are also watching this podcast can see the graphic that we have out there. For those who are just listening, I will describe it. On the left side of the chart, you could see that the trade was entered on April 16th, 2020, when the price of Amazon was doing quite well. It was an accelerating, uptrending chart. Now, the two areas circled in purple represent the earnings reports that came out in May and August. And those, you, those on the chart, you could clearly see cause price appreciation. Actually, I should say dramatic price appreciation. So here we are now uh, with the price of Amazon trading at $3,402 per share. A lot of that a result of two very positive, favorable earnings reports. Now, if we were to calculate the initial returns, remember it was $89 a share. 
using the multiple tab of the BCI calculators, we would get a little more clarity as to whether or not the initial structuring of this trade was something favorable to us. And the interpretation of favorable will differ from investor to investor. But let's break it down now. The price of Amazon was 2,093. The 2,100 slightly out of the money. It's almost at the money. Let's call it near the money. $2,100 strike generated $8,900 per contract. That represented, if we look at the root uh, cell on the right side of the spreadsheet, a 4.3% return <clears throat> and a 0.3% possibility of upside potential if Amazon moved from the current market price of 2,093 up to that 2,100 strike. Well, now looking back, it certainly did and way more. But the 4.3%, if you recall, was a nine month return. So if you annualize that out, it annualizes out to only 5.3%. It's about a half a percent a month. Is that enough? Is that our goal? Well, for me, it's not. For some others, uh, much more conservative than I am, um, maybe it is. But uh, for me, I would never ever undertake a trade like this uh, to generate less than 6% a year. Uh, I just assume buy a broad market, low expense ratio index fund and not have to do any work at all. So that's the way the trade was structured. Now, should we close that trade now? That is the question. So when a strike moves deep in the money as this one certainly has, because the price of the stock went way higher than that $2,100 strike, leaving that strike deep, deep in the money. As a rule, the time value component of the premium moves closer to zero. Now the intrinsic value is through the roof, but the time value gets smaller and smaller. So in this case, the time value cost to close, as I said, was 2.6%. But in order to close that, we have to add an additional $135,680 to close that particular uh, short call. So, you know, you may or may not have that amount of money or have that inclination to do that at that point in time. So to determine, let's, let's assume now money is no object, to determine if this is an appropriate action, we must ask ourselves, if we could generate more than 2.6% by contract expiration, which by the way, is more than four months away. And the answer to that is a resounding yes. To get 2.6% in four months with covered call writing should be pretty easy. So uh, from that perspective, yes, this trade can be closed and the cash uh, can be used to then enter a new trade. Now, uh, again, we have to have the cash available to close because of that huge intrinsic value component. So. What if we can't and we don't have the cash or the inclination to close the trade? Well, then we continue to monitor the trade for potential other exit strategy opportunities. We still have more than four months to go. So who knows what's going to happen over those next four months, which, by the way, will include another earnings report. So what are the lessons learned from this interesting trade? Well, number one, all of us will benefit from analyzing our trades. Um, how, how could I have done better? That's the question we should always ask ourselves. Even if we had a hugely successful trade, we should always say, could I have done better? And if so, how? Or if I lost money, could I have lost less money? Or could I have turned that loss into a gain? These are the questions we ask ourselves that will make us all much, much better and more successful investors. Well, here are some lessons that I learned from this trade. By using an expiration date months away, this is a leaps option, we're adding additional risk by trading through multiple earnings reports. Just like these earnings reports were favorable and caused price acceleration, they could have also been disappointing, causing share decline, and we could have really gotten hammered here. Now also, longer term options, although the amount of cash they generate initially looks impressive, they will generate lower annualized returns. So that's something very important we must all understand when we're deciding on what expiration dates to use. 
Shorter term options will allow us to reevaluate our bullish assessments on a particular security on a more frequent basis. Here, uh, a nine month uh, obligation was taken out. I prefer much shorter obligations, one month, sometimes weeklies. So these are the lessons learned from a trade like this one. Let's summarize. We all become better investors by analyzing our trades. No matter how sophisticated you are, no matter how long you've been doing this, this is something that should always be part of your arsenal when it comes to your strategy executions. And I do this to this day, even though I've been selling options for more than 25 years. And I'll continue to do it as long as I invest. Now, these trades with Amazon definitely showed some valuable lessons. Uh, while achieving the maximum return was initially structured, it wasn't a huge annualized return. And of course, going through earnings reports is something that I'm not happy about. Next time, returns will be even higher by analyzing a trade like this one. Before I go, I want to mention our pride and joy, our BCI package, which is an acronym for our best and most comprehensive educational product. It includes six online video courses with downloadable workbooks, six calculators created by BCI, so they're found nowhere else, and five of our best-selling books in ebook format. In addition to that, you also get our annual premium membership, 13 months, which includes four reports of eligible securities, four option selling, continuous and never-ending online training uh, programs, and uh, expanded calculators and many other resources and downloads. Our on uh, ongoing and never-ending training includes our complete library of Ask Allen videos, our Blue Hour detailed webinar series, and we add one or more new training videos every single month. It's all part of the package. Go to our website, www.thebluecollarinvestor.com and click on the link at the top that says BCI package. Folks, there you have it. Uh, I wanna thank you all very, very much for uh, taking the time to listen to this BCI podcast number 117. Some of you also watched it, titled When a Covered Call Strike Moves $1,000 in the Money. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and most importantly, I hope it puts cash in your pockets. As always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody.